Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into the parallelization in Lang graph. So basically, two or more nodes can run in parallel with the beauty of Lang graph. So we can define it in such a way that those nodes will execute completely in parallel without writing an explicit code or additional code to make it parallel. So now in this particular video, we'll be looking into a simple example of fetching the data from multiple sources in parallel and then summarizing it to get the final result. So basically we'll be simply giving a topic to the graph. It will do what? It will simply fetch the news headlines using Tavili search and it will also fetch the data, whatever it is, whatever is available from the Wikipedia articles. From both the sources, the data will be fetched and then it will be given to the LLM for summarization task. And finally, we'll be getting the latest updates for that particular topic, whatever we give. So now these two things, the getting the results from the Tavili and Wikipedia articles is very simple. I already have discussed this in the previous videos. If you have not seen that yet, please do check it. You can see. I have installed some of the libraries which are going to be helpful for building the graph as well as using the uh, different components in the APIs or I would say the nodes. So I would recommend you to simply import all these libraries and then we'll be simply loading our model whatever we are using. So over here I'm using the Grok model uh, from the Grok API. The model name is Llama 3.3 and the same way whatever we use to do before the same way I'm going to import it and use it. I'll also be requiring the Tavili API key so you can simply get it from the Tavili uh, website from their official website. You can generate a simple Tavili API key and use it. Next just to check whether the LLM is working I have simply executed this cell over here you can see the LLM is working fine. Now we'll be creating a state over here for definition of state I already have discussed multiple ways the different state schemas that we have seen in the previous video. So here I have used the normal typed dict method. Over here we have three state variables that is the topic, the summary and the knowledge. So basically this topic is nothing but the input from the user from whatever uh, you would say the query the user will be putting that will be stored in this particular topic state variable. Next this summary state variable will store the final summary that will be generated from the LLM after giving the knowledge to the LLM. Next, this particular knowledge variable will contain the information that will be retrieved from these two sources that is the news from Tavili and the Wikipedia articles. Over here you can see I have used the annotated and inside this I have used the operator dot add and the list is the type. So basically, uh, always remember that whenever you are executing some sort of nodes in parallel, over here we have two nodes that are going to be executed in parallel. So their outputs might be accumulated at the same time and will try to update the same state variables when it will be uh, executed. So for that purpose, we'll be using this particular operator dot add. This operator will simply not uh, will simply avoid the mess that will be created that means if at the same time two nodes are going to update that particular state variable then it will simply append the outputs from both the state variables and not overwrite it so for that we are using this particular functionality over here and let's execute this Next, we are going to create this particular node. This is the very first node that is the Wikipedia node. This will simply fetch the necessary information from the Wikipedia articles. So over here you can see I have simply imported the Langchain community document loaders. From that I have imported the Wikipedia loader. This is going to be used to fetch the necessary documents information for that particular topic. Here you just have to create the object of Wikipedia loader using the query object that will be given from the user and which can be fetched from the state of topic. And then you have to specify the number of documents that you want to load and simply dot load. This will simply load your articles. 
Next, we want the article's information in the form of a string and not any other object. That is why we are going to make it into necessary data type. So we'll be using dot join and from that we'll be only fetching the doc dot page content for the doc in articles. So if we are getting two articles from both these articles, we'll be only storing the page content from it and we'll join it with the help of the dot join and it will be in the form of a string. And this will be stored in the context variable and this node will simply return the knowledge or I would say the updates will be stored in the knowledge state variable with what with this particular value. So basically this context variable will be updated into the, into the knowledge state variable. And note here how it is getting stored. We are sending it in the form of a list, not only a string so that it can be easily appended over here. The node is news insights over here. This will be uh, using the Tavily search API. So we'll be creating a search tool object from the Tavily search results uh, class. Here we are defining maximum results as three. So this object is created. Now we'll be invoking this particular object with the help of the topic that the user has uh, given and which has got already updated in the state. So state of topic will be passed over here and whatever results are going to be, uh, you know, fetched from the Tavily API that will be stored in the results variable. Now, again, we want it to be in the form of a string. So that is why we are using the dot join function inside this. We are iterating over all the results and we are simply fetching the doc of content, which contains the actual information and uh, which is excluding the data, uh, different metadata. This article variable will be containing the final string results and will be updating in it in the state variable knowledge. Again, here we are updating it in the form of a list and not a string. So now if these two nodes executes parallel and at the same time, if we get the uh, information from this particular two different nodes, then these two will be appended in the knowledge variable. It won't be overwritten. It will simply be appended. Now next we'll be creating the summarization node. So this summarization node is nothing but a simple node, which will be uh, calling the LLM, which will fetch the state variables knowledge. Uh, which contains the information from both the Wikipedia and the Tavily search API. This knowledge will be sent to the LLM just to summarize it in a proper way so that it can be presented in the form uh, in front of user so that it will be readable as well as understandable. So over here you can see we are simply fetching the state of knowledge variable in the context variable. We are writing a simple prompt summarize the following information on the topic and here we'll be passing the user topic with the given context. Now we'll invoke the LLM object with this particular sort of information that we have provided in the prompt along with the system message. You are a tech analyst. That's it. This will simply return the reply from the LLM and this reply will then be stored in the summary state variable. Basically, it will be updated in the summary state variable, whatever we have created in the actual state. So I hope this thing is clear. So these three are the nodes that we have created and uh, to make and to make you clear only these two nodes, the wiki insights and the news insights, these two nodes will be running in parallel. I'll be showing you the graph, how it actually looks uh, after which you will be after which everything will be clear. So now we'll be creating this particular graph here. We have uh, taken the state graph object inside which we have passed on the schema. We have created three nodes. Then the then see how we have added the edges. So first edge is nothing but from the start to the wiki insights node. Next edge is nothing but from the start node to the news insights. Now over here you can just imagine from your start node. It is getting redirected to two different nodes. And since it is getting redirected to two different nodes from the single node start, that is why it is going to happen or execute in parallel. So these two nodes, Wiki Insights and News Insights will uh, take place or I would say will execute in parallel. Next, once this is executed, the Wiki Insights and the News Insights, both these nodes will then pop out to the summarized topic node.
that's it and the summarized topic node will then go to the end node for stopping the execution we'll then compile the graph let's execute this and over here you can see we'll now uh, simply display the image of the graph how it will look see over here you can see uh, the start node goes parallelly or i would say at the same time to the news node and the wiki node these two nodes will happen or these two nodes will execute in parallel and then it will simply go to the summarized topic node once this is executed it will go to the end node so this is our very graph i hope till here it is clear now we'll see the execution of this particular graph how it will take place so now over here you can see i have simply called the particular graph to execute it inside this i am passing the state variable as topic apple vision pro launch so basically this will fetch the latest news from the internet as well as from the wikipedia then finally i'll be displaying the actual summary that will be created from the last node so let's execute this see how it is getting executed first the you know this news insights has got executed then the wiki insights and then the summarized topic node and you can see over here the summary that is getting generated i have printed it in markdown so if you could see uh, from this particular uh, scenario that has got taken place you could uh, simply tell that this news insights has got executed first then the wiki insights and then the summarized topic then where is the parallel thing has gone so to you know understand how it actually works in parallel we'll have to check the time stamps or i would say the time taken by each node to execute and the total time the graph has taken to execute the entire execution so for that i'll be creating a decorator and to each node i'll pass on that decorator so let's do that so over here you can see i have imported time and i have created this time it node so basically this will be passed on on top of every node it will be applied to each node so that it will capture the the execution time of the node so here i have simply defined a wrapper which will uh, contain the start time the end time in between these our entire execution of the node will take place and finally we'll print the node execution time that's it let's execute this so let's do that over here like this you have to pass it on let's execute this similarly for the next node i'll do that similarly for the next node also i'll do this again let's build the graph now that we have applied the decorator to each and every node now it's time to also apply the timing for this entire graph execution also so basically we'll create a variable start total which will capture the time before starting the graph execution and the end total variable will capture the time stamp after the execution of the graph and then we'll simply subtract them to get the full and final execution time of the entire graph here i'll simply display the summary in markdown that's it now let's see how it executes at what time each node executes how much time it takes and the total execution time of the graph let's print it first node has taken 1.69 seconds second node has taken 4.22 seconds and third node has taken 2.84 seconds the total execution time of the entire graph has got taken place in 7.08 seconds now ideally if this wouldn't have worked in parallel then this 7.08 should be equal to the addition of all these three right so let's do that so over here you can see if i add all these three times 1.69 4.22 and 2.84 i get 8.75 as the total time but over here the total time that graph has taken is 7.08 it means that the execution has occurred in parallel just to check whether this time tallies according to the parallel strategy uh, we have uh, will be doing one more mathematical calculation so we know that these two nodes are getting take, uh, are getting executed in parallel 1.69 seconds the first node has taken the second node has taken 4.22 seconds so if it is occurring in parallel we'll ignore the minimum value we'll only take the maximum value that is 4.22 so ideally this 4.22 and the 2.84 these two 
should be exactly equal to 7.08. Let's do. Let's do this calculation. So 4.22 plus 2.84. This gives us 7.06, which is approximately equal. There is only a difference between 0 0.02 second, which is taken uh, because of the other operations that are getting performed. For example, updating the state variables or fetching the data from the state variables. All these things has taken around 0.2, 0 0.02 seconds. So you can see this particular thing, or I would say calculations, has proven that the graph executes parallelly over here. So this is the beauty of the Lang graph. Whichever node you define from a common node, whichever nodes you define initiating from a common node, all of them will be executing in parallel, no matter what. So I hope the parallelization of graph in Lang graph is clear to you all. I hope this was fruitful as well as informative for you all. If you like this particular video, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Please join me on Telegram. Thanks for watching. Have a good day ahead.